The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. First Speaker Podcast, coming to you July 16th, 2023. It is a Sunday afternoon here. And surprisingly, there's no rain. Surprisingly, there's actually not a day of rain. This summer's been really bad with rain. I mean, pretty much every day since since school ended for the kids, uh, late May. Virtually every single day we've had rain here. Um, I'm over the summer. I really am. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I remember I was a time as, as a kid when, you know, growing up, you look forward to the summertime because there's no school and you get to see family and you do these trips and you can do all these things, go to the pool all the time and all that, and you can sleep in late and... And those days are over, obviously. As an adult, you hate it. <laughs> As an adult with kids, you hate it even more. Um, and for me, living in South Florida, living in West Palm Beach, Florida, especially, you know, we get a lot of rain here during the summertime. But it seems like this year especially has been the one year where it's been, like, over the top. Like, I'll admit this past week, this past week, um... Uh, was probably the driest week of the of the summer so far, and I, I say that even though it's rained the majority of the week, like even in the days where it was mostly dry, it still at the very least drizzled. Oh, we got a threat of rain. It has rained. Every, I think I can count maybe on my hand how many days, and less than that, um, how many days it's actually uh, not rained here in South Florida, and it's depressing in a sense because. Yeah, we do need we do need rain and, and rain's good and this and that. But it's just that one of those things where if I plan things with my family, it's hard to, to lock in plans because you don't know if the weather's gonna impact that. And my kids love water sports. My kids love going to the pool, they love doing doing the water parks and all that. So that's been affecting everything we do. Um so anyway. Summer sucks. It's, it does suck. And you know, I say that that's not even the worst part for me. Not only has it been the most rainiest summer of so far, I think I've ever experienced my forty-three years of living. It has been. I don't know if there's a comp for this, but it seems to me, at least in the last couple of weeks, especially especially the last week or two, that it has been the hottest summer I've ever experienced. It has been bad, like really bad, um, and. To the point now, it's like I don't want to go outside anymore. Like I, 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 I go outside. If I'm, I'm going to melt like a Kit Kat bar. Like seriously, I want to go outside. Like it's it's it, like it says ninety degrees. Like right now it says ninety degrees, but it feels like one hundred thirty. You know, it's really it's actually impacted my my exercise too. Also, because if I don't get to walk early in the morning before work, before my day starts, I'm screwed. Because I I, I actually try walking a couple times at work. You know, because you have to exercise. I want to exercise. I want to move my body and not be sedentary. <sighs> the problem is, though, it's too, it's so fucking hot outside to the point now. I don't want to go outside and walk. And if I go outside and walk, then now, now I'm more tired now because of the heat. Okay, I'm sweating like a motherfucker. Okay? And it, it's just it's horrible. It feels horrible. So this has been a bad summer. This has been a, I, I mean, I have the summer blues really bad. I just want it to end. I'm a, I'm over a fall guy, fall winter guy anyway. You know, I'm looking forward to football coming back soon. Which means it gets closer to, to the fall and, and the weather cooling off a little bit now. The only thing that'll make this even worse is if we get a hurricane. And so far, knocking on wood, you hear that, right? Knocking on wood, no hurricanes. It has been nothing so far, really much activity in the uh, in the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico. So far, so far. Um, of course, hurricanes tend to, to, to sprout up a lot more between August and October. So. That's the same. We're not, we're not even at the peak top, the peak time of the of the year for uh for hurricane season here. Um, but you know, I, like I said, I've done my, I've done hurricanes in my in my lifetime, um, many times over, and I'm 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 more than over it. Hurricane Andrew, 1992, of course, being probably the worst one. Um, you know, obviously we were spared a lot of a lot of damage and obviously life and stuff, but. You know, I've also had the hurricanes in '04 and '05. You know, Jean and Francis, and you know, was it Wilma? It was Wilma. So you yeah, had those, and then I think we had a hurricane here 
in 2017, but this is the, that's the one we actually evacuated for. Remember that? I, I evacuated in 2017, went to, went to North Carolina, to Charlotte for a couple of days to stay my cousin. Um, and there was some damage here, but not really my house. Everything was fine. Ah, man. But it's been a bad summer. It's been, it's, I, 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 I'm, looking, I'm also looking forward to my kids going to school soon. I mean, we're about three weeks away from them going to school, three and a half weeks from going to school. So looking forward to that. Uh, I know they're not. Who cares? <laughs> I, I told them I, I did it. You got to do it too. If I have to go to school with twelve, you know, you know, from K through twelve, you're doing the same thing too. If you want to go to college? It's up to you. I'm, I leave it up to you. But school, everybody got to do it. You got you ain't special. You got to do it too. So anyway, we're gonna talk here. Well, at the back end of the show, we're gonna read off the uh, the uh, this week's Q O T W, which we call Question of the Week. Um, supposed to be done on Thursday show, but decided to you know push this to today's show. Um. I hope you guys enjoyed the last episode we did uh, with my uh, my friends uh, Rob Barnett and uh, DJ Minter. We did uh, we ranked our top ten um, comedians of all time. That was a fantastic show. Got some really good feedback on that show. I really appreciate you guys. Um, um, people who uh, come back to me and told me how much they enjoyed that episode. I really appreciate that. Um, <sighs> so we'll we'll read off uh, some responses because we the, the question of the week was was actually um, ranking your top or or, or naming or ranking want to do it either way you want to do it uh your top five comedians of all time so we had some nice some good feedback on that actually on the show i mean we really appreciate you guys uh feedback on that we'll continue doing all these qotws um going forward on the podcast um we love we love the inter- interaction on the show um the new york jets have been selected as the team to be featured this uh off season well say this training camp rather um on hbo hard knocks as a look i i I think it sucks that teams are forced to do this now. It's in the CBA and all this stuff that teams are forced to do it if, if they're selected to ha- to get filmed. I personally hate it. I think it sucks. I think teams have choices to do that. As a fan of football and a fan of content and a fan of entertainment, this is going to be great. Because, I mean, this is probably the most intriguing football team going into the year. And look, probably the next episode or two, whenever I do my next episode, solo episode, I'm going to do review my top five uh, most interesting storylines entering the season. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil it right now. <laughs> this is going to be a top five. Okay? This is going to be a top five. Because obviously, you know, this offseason was capped off by Aaron Rodgers uh, signing, or getting traded, rather, from the Packers to the, to the Jets. The Jets, at the very least, should be a playoff team. At the very least, should be a playoff team. Um, and we want to see also how does Aaron Rodgers now, you know, deal with the pressure of playing in a market that is literally, and I mean literally, the polar opposite of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay? With 10 times more local media, and 10 times being, is, is saying it loosely, that you're going to deal with now every day. You know? And who and Aaron Rodgers, who's, who's already kind of ordinary anyway, and he's closing on 40 years old anyway, on top of that too. Really curious to see how he handles that. But the Jets as, as a whole... It's, it's always been a circus, even before, even before you add in Aaron Rodgers' uh, angle of it all. So, in terms of that alone, I'm interested. I haven't watched Hard Knocks in about 10 years. Like the last Hard Knocks I was really invested in, honestly, was probably the Dolphins in 20... That might have been 2012, 2013. I can't remember exactly the year. And I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Hard Knocks, but I just never really... I have never, never really gone my way to watch the, 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 the you know... The show really in recent years, just because I, mean, I don't know, I just don't want to. But I, I, I will say this: I will be watching, I will be watching this one without question. I cannot wait till they start filming. Can't wait till they, till they start doing this. Um, and I'm really pumped for football. And like I said, well, next a couple episodes somewhere down the road, we got a couple things to done the pie coming up next week or so on the, on the podcast. We're going to be ranking top quarterbacks in the, in the conference. No, top, not even top quarterbacks. We're going to rank all the quarterbacks in each conference. On the show in the next week or two, uh, we'll be dropping episodes of that very soon. I've been actually, actually we're recording that episode this week, in fact, of uh, those episodes this week, in fact. So look out for that on the feed when it comes down. But yeah, I, I'm 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 in I'm in for this. I'm really in for this one. I mean, yes, it's not fair that teams don't get the choice to say no. But as a fan of football, a fan of entertainment, a fan of content, and all that, and a fan of this drama, I'm sorry, I, I'm I'm a fan of it. I am you know I am back this year. I am invested. In HBO Hard Knocks, I am, I really am. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to watch it. Um, okay, what else? Uh, LeBron James officially back for season twenty-one. He revealed he is not retiring. His his uh, his he was at the ESPYS getting, getting an award. I've been an award for the uh, 
passing the scoring title, all-time scoring title, uh, all-time scoring leader um, in in league history. Um, here's his uh, his comments. What he had to say about him returning to gay basketball. I don't care how many more points I score or what I can or cannot do on the floor. The real question for me is, can I play without cheating this game? The day I can't give the game everything on the floor is the day I'll be done. Lucky for you guys, that day is not today. <laughs> I'm going to say this right now. So this, look, I, I'm glad it's come back, number one. Let's just start there. But, you know, and, I, and look, I, I'm going to say this, I, I will say this right now. I, I am a LeBron fan. I love LeBron. LeBron's my top five players of all time, okay? Great players of all time. He's number two all time on the list. Number two in terms of, uh, great, you know, behind Jordan, the greatest player of all time. But I can understand, you know, the, the more and more I see it now, and I'm looking at it back, you know, from a broader scope. Someone who is not, who is used to spend a good time defending LeBron, but maybe because he was in Miami too, especially because he was a member of Miami Heat for four years. But I cannot, I, I, I more and more see people's problem with LeBron. As I get older and I start seeing him, you know, I understand why there are so many people who don't like the guy. I just don't. I, I, I do. I do understand now why. Because he seems so contrived he seems so robotic first off no one no one even thought you're gonna retire lebron like even when the rumors came out after you lost it to denver the, those comments you made you know what you're doing come on now you did that because you wanted to cover for the fact you got swept with the nuggets which okay look it happened so what but you did actually want to cover it for the fact you lost the nuggets you got swept with the nuggets in the, in the conference finals let's be real here okay so by by you putting putting out the the thought that oh I might retire, you know, that now kind of masks the result that you all right otherwise you know dealt with in, in, in on the court which which you got you got, you got uh, swept by the number Nuggets in the, in the uh, conference finals. I love LeBron. I think LeBron has done so much so much good for the game of basketball. He's done so much good for for, for people. You know, he's a he's a very very aware person. I think he's well intentioned. I think some of the hate that goes on LeBron is it's it's double. Down. Look, he's not a bad guy. He he's a great family man. Beautiful wife Savannah, three kids. Uh, you know, kids are well adjusted kids, from what we can see. Um, you know, and and, and especially in a time where we've seen, especially black fathers, you know, where you don't see the connect. You know, LeBron has no problem for you know flaunt, not not flaunt. That's the wrong word to use here, but LeBron. Being that dude, being stable, being a, a child, and really being a child star, with a spotlight on him from from since the age of what fourteen, fifteen years old. He's he's a pretty well adjusted guy. Let's be real here. Okay, so he's a pretty well adjusted guy, given all the attention he grabs. But some of these things he does like this, and look, it's not a big deal. And ultimately, at the end of the day, because there's some guys doing worse. Like John Morant, obviously, lots of issues there. Okay. There's a lot of stars through the years that have failed under under the scrutiny of a stardom. He has not. Again, if his worst sin is that he he did he made the decision to go to Miami, which pissed off folks, and the way and the way he did it was bad, then trust me, you're doing you're doing a lot of things right in this in this world. But you know, it, I, I I wish LeBron wasn't so contrived. Is that too much to ask? And look, it's his right to do it. He's a man. I ain't got someone to do. But, you know, I, I just wish he was so drive. That's all. You know? So, and that's all I asked for. It's being a little more real. Like, dude, you weren't retiring. You were not retiring, dude. You were not retiring. Okay? And I say as a guy, that roots for you. <laughs> I think you're number two all time, you know? And even though I think Jordan's great all time, I prefer you over Jordan because I, I love the, game, the, the way you play the game. And, look, you never cheat the game, obviously. You're not going to cheat the game. But come on, you you were never retiring, okay? You were never retiring. Just stop, okay? But am I glad he's back from the season 21? Yes. Lakers champs win a championship next year. Fairly decent, you know, as long as he stays healthy. They've had, a, they've had in, my, in my opinion, they've had the best offseason of all, in my opinion. But everything, again, falls down to, whether or not he, more, not so much him also, but definitely him, but... Anthony Davis, is he healthy? Does he stay healthy? Is he healthy for the playoffs? That's where ultimately everything falls into place. So, glad he's back, but, you know, 
the, I, I can use I can use the I, I could do without the uh, pomp and circumstance, if you will. So, staying in the NBA, Paul Pierce retired. Soon be Hall of Famer, Paul Pierce. Oh yeah, yeah, another bad take by Paul Pierce. He was on, I believe, he was on the uh, Showtime Basketball. I don't know what shows it's a show with Rachel Nichols and company. Um, he was on there. Um, he, he look. I'm, I've never been a Paul Pierce fan. I respect his game. Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer, first ballot, the whole nine. Um, he's he's been known to make some really really bad takes through the years in his days at ESPN before he got fired. Um, and a lot of things there. Uh, Paul Pierce is excuse me, very resentful guy. Paul Pierce weighed in on the possibility of Damian Lillard going to Miami, and if that happens, their playoff chances. And he had a really, in my opinion, a bad, bad, bad take. Here's what he has to say. Let's hear this. You put them together, they won't make it out the first round. Wait, wait. You got to understand how they got to the championship this year. A lot of this had to do with their depth. A lot of this had to do with their depth, and guys playing way above their pay grade. Way up. Caleb, Anthony, these guys was averaging 20 points on Boston. We ain't never seen them do that. Then you had Duncan Robinson. So if you get Dame, they gone. They already gone, but then you lose another 18 point, 20 score, gone. You're gonna have to throw in Robinson. He you gonna have to get you gonna have to gut that team out. I see his point with the the depth part. Makes sense. That's probably the only logical thing he said there, honestly. First off, Paul Pierce, before I go into the rest of the the, the, the whole diatribe there. Who's Anthony, first off? The fact you named a guy on the team that doesn't even exist, or didn't even exist on that team, Anthony, tells you you, know, you don't know what a damn thing you're saying, okay? Paul Pierce, you don't know what a damn thing you're saying. You're, just, you're, just say, you're spewing out garbage to, you know, you know just to... to, to look, these, 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 these athletes, this is why I've never been a fan of all these athletes coming to media. Not all. And I say all of them. Some of them are okay. I think Draymond's doing a fantastic job in, in his space. You know, I think Hunter Perk has done a decent job in his space. I think a lot of guys, J.J. Reddick has done a fantastic job in his space. But Richard Jefferson has been awesome um, on ESPN. But Paul Pierce, like, he's, dude, he is Skip Bayless on steroids. Okay? He spews these really bad takes. He says that he had a better career than Dwayne Wade, which is complete garbage. Oh, look, he has a right to say what he wants. It's his opinion, you know. He could be wrong. He's, he has a right to be wrong in his opinion, but he's wrong. Okay? Look, if, if he had said that the Heat wouldn't win the finals, oh, but rather that, go to the finals or win, win, not win the East despite getting Lillard, I can respect that. But to say that they won't get out of the first round in with Dame Lillard is bad. It's a bad take for someone who's a Hall of Fame player who knows the game of basketball. Come on, Paul Pierce, you know common sense. This team's at least a first round, at least get into the second round of the playoffs. At the very least. Look, is there a chance they still lose to Boston? Is there a chance they still lose to Milwaukee in the East? Yes. Very possible. But to sit there and say that they're not, they're not going to first round of the playoffs, that is a bad take. I mean, I know it's, I don't know if it's as bad as your take, as your take that uh, LeBron isn't uh, even top five all time. I think it was, he has a take some of that years ago. Or the Dwayne Wade take. But this is, this is up there. This is up there. Um... And the fact you can't get the names right on the team. Anthony? Who the fuck's Anthony? Who's Anthony? Is out, out, out of curiosity. <laughs> like, come on, Paul. Come on, do better, man. Come on, do better. Um, Genie Bus. Now, I just found out this interview was done two years ago. But a certain someone, <laughs> a certain all time great, all time Laker, got really, got, basically raised some concerns on her list. So, Genie Bus, about. Two years ago, on the All the Smoke, Up and Smoke, was it All the Smoke podcast with with Stephen, with Stephen Jackson and uh, Matt Barnes? She, she listed her five most important Lakers of all time. He, she goes: one is Kobe Bryant, two Kareem Abdul Jabbar, three LeBron James, four Magic Johnson, five Phil Jackson. Now, most the most noble absence on this list is Mister Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, of course, won three championships in, in L.A., a three peat, in fact. Um, the only three peat in Laker history, for the record, was the, he was the best player on those three peat teams. Although I argue Kobe Bryant was probably one B last year or two of those three peats, but we'll go. That's the discussion of the day. And uh, Shaq basically responded on the uh, thing, saying why. Basically, he's not on the list, 
and he has a case to be made here. Like, I look, I look at his list. First off, and I look at these five guys here. I, I, I got to say why Kobe's there, obviously. Kareem, obviously. Magic, obviously. Phil, you got to at least consider it. You know, importance. What about Pat Riley, though? Um, LeBron? Nah. LeBron James, for even though they want to title in the bubble, there's no way LeBron James is the most important. It's not top five most important Laker all time. In uh, all time, Shaq's got to be on this list. Again, when you're the only player that's repeated as the number one player on the team in that franchise's history, in that rich history, automatically that should put you right in front for, for consideration. I know why I get Kobe again. Again, Kobe, no problem. The Magic Horse, my greatest Laker all time, my opinion anyway. Kareem, you, you know it. Phil, obviously winning, was it five titles? Five titles as a Laker head coach? I mean, Pat Ryan's not there, obviously, but there's a consideration there. But Shaq's got to be there. You take out, take out LeBron, put Shaq in there. I know why I know why you should put LeBron there, number one. Given the fact that it was done two years ago, especially as well, the fresh off the, the, the bubble championship. But you can't tell me that, you cannot tell me that uh, Shaq was not top five uh, most important Laker of all time. Uh, I'm sorry. I know. I know. I I, I know. She probably forgot. She probably had to do it on. And then I didn't see the entire interview, but I know. I figured. I figured that she probably did this, um, on like just probably in spur of the moment. But man, Shaq's got to be there, man. Take a LeBron, and it's not even, it's not even close. It's not even close. I'm not saying I'm not saying Shaq is better than LeBron all the time, but if the question was most important Laker, LeBron's only been there four or five years now. Shaq was there seven. And Shaq repeated there. Like, what are we doing? Like, Shaq actually relifted the Lakers' championship hopes after Showtime. Like, like what are we doing here? Like, come on. I, I, I don't get that. But her list, her opinion, you know? She's wrong, too. <laughs> um, Let's see what else I have to unlock here. Um, the, the New York Mets. Also, it breaks over to baseball. The Mets will come out losing two straight already against the Dodgers. I'm going to give this team another, I said a week, but I think after, after this weekend, I think I'm done. Um, but I'm giving them the week, and then I'm done with this team. I think after this week, they should start selling parts off that team. Whether, whether or not it's it's uh, trading away Sterling Martes and maybe some of that, you know, some of the pieces on, on top. I don't know if they, you consider trading away Verlander or, or Scherzer, you know, aging pitchers that they can use. Uh, a contender can use for championship teams. Claire's not a championship team right now. Um, the only good thing about this Mets team right now is the fact that they, they the young talent has been fantastic this year. Uh, Francisco Alvarez and Brett Brady's been good this year. Um, other than that, the pitching has been awful. Um, the hitting has been consistent again. Um, it's just been a really bad year, inconsistent year. Um, a year where this team is the biggest payroll in all of baseball, and it doesn't matter. People ask me now, uh, should they fire Buck Showalter? Hell no. He ain't the problem. He's these players. Even even Lindor said yesterday too, after, you know, after the game, that they got to play better. They have the talent there. It, 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 there isn't really any of the decisions that, that Buck is making that's causing them to play this bad. They're just not playing well. They're not playing well. So do better. This, this, this has been a sorry-ass season for this, this Mets team, and I'm over it. I'm over it, you know, and I, I, I'm not going to, you guys know, I remember I, this is podcast for years, you know, my rule when it comes to best baseball and, and, and in a lot of ways, most of my sports teams now, if you're, I, I treat you guys like a, like a, like a TV show. If your season's not good, I am not wa- wasting my time watching. I have enough, I have other obligations to, to, t- to take care of. Okay. If you're not good, I'm not wasting my time watching. So the Mets have been bad this year. Give another week, and then I'm out, and then it's all parts, and that's it. So that's what I got there for you. This has been really bad, really, really bad. Um, very bad season, horrible. Really hate how this team has played. Um, out the gate, I was hoping that you know they come, you know, win at least two or three against the Dodgers. That ain't happening, obviously. So there you go. All right, one more thing before we get to the QLTWs questions of the week responses. Um, I got a lot of concerts I'm planning on attending in the, in the coming weeks. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm actually attending. Two shows in in a four day span next week, starting later in the week and into next week. 
Um, I am going to see Mudvayne in concert. Mudvayne's a band that I, I, I was a huge fan of years ago. They were on hiatus for about 13 years. They've come back recently. They're touring. This tour kicks off actually here in West Palm Beach um, on Thursday. I'll be there with some couple friends of mine at the concert. Um, what, what I'm hearing, ticket sales are awful for this, series, for this tour, though. Um, so, I don't know. But I will, I, will, I will be there anyway. It is definitely... Bob is definitely a buckless band of, 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 of a band I've never seen before. I've, I've been dying to see for years, and finally get a chance to see him. I want to take full advantage of it. So we got Mudvayne in that one, and then um, three, four days later, four days later actually, um, my wife and I take our kids to see Fall Out Boy in concert um, on a Monday. Also West Palm Beach, same venue um, as well. That should be a fun show as well too. Um, my kids are big fans of theirs, especially my six year old loves them. Um, I like them as well too. Um, should be a fun show. Um, and then I know in September, I think it's the 16th of September, I'm planning on seeing Event Sevenfold again in concert for, I think, the third time now. Third time in concert. Um, same venue as well <laughs> in West Palm Beach. Um, should be a fun show as well. Um, so, yeah, that's not got going. You know, I, you know, you know, prior to having kids and, and a family, I used to be a really, really big concert guy. Going to a lot of concerts. And um, now... You know, it's been hard to me because number one, cost to start there, cost that shows up through the roof. Let's start there, but um, you know, now that I, I make, make, I'm making a more effort now to doing more things now, um, concerts are a private for me. Instead of concerts are private, private for me, and it, now that I come out of COVID, now bands are more com- more comfortable now touring and doing these kind of things. So now I want to start seeing them. So. Month in this week, I follow boy week after, and I have events sampled in September. So, two, three good shows I'm looking forward to watching and seeing. So, all right, all right, time is up. Time's up now. It is now time to reveal our all the responses we had on social media from questions of the week. We got, we got these responses from um, a couple of responses from Instagram, from Facebook, from Twitter, even from um. The new, uh, I, I, you know, new uh, threads, <laughs> um, social media platform. Um, so, some good ones here. Um, this is also response to again the episode we did, the last episode we did on Thursday. We dropped on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, top ten comedians all time. We, I asked you guys to give me your top five comedians all time, whether it's in order or not. Some really good and really diverse responses to here, especially. So let's start here first. Ryan Miller says his number one is George Carlin, number two, Adam Sandler, number three, Nate Bargansi, number four, Tom Segura, number five, Mitch Hedberg. I love that as George Carlin number one. Uh, first off, you know, I feel like Garland, I had Carlin number four on my list, but I told you guys on my on, the, on that podcast that two through four on my list was, was very fluid. Today, George Carlin be number two. Just saying. So thank you, Ryan, for that. All right, Bill, Bill Trousel says he has Robin Williams one, George Carlin two, uh, Johnny Carson at three. Rodney Dangerfield at four and Don Rickles at five. I like that list too as well. Uh, Johnny Carson, especially the one does a big surprise there, of course. Um, Charlie Thrower has Richard Pryor at one, Eddie Murphy at two, George Collin at three, Kevin Hart at four, and Dave Chappelle at five. This list is similar to mine, actually, outside of Kevin Hart. Um, four is five are in my list on my top four. I, I, I guess you remember my, my list. I had, uh, Eddie Murphy, one, Richard Pryor, two, Dave Chappelle, three, and George Collin, four. So Charlie, Charlie Thrower, him and I are on the same wavelength when it comes to comedians. Good job, man. All right, Nick Ficarelli has Lenny Bruce at one. Milton Burrow, that's a good one. Milton Burrow at two. I was a big Milton Burrow fan growing up. Uh, Robin Williams at three. Ronnie Dangerfield at four. And Sam Kinison at five. I like that list a lot. Like I said, big bro fan growing up. Big Dangerfield fan growing up. Sam Kinison got into re- in racing years, um, of course. Um and Lenny, Lenny, Lenny Bruce is actually was one very underrated as well too. Thank you, Nick, for that one. Um, Alex Babb he has Mitch Hedberg at one, John Mulaney at two, Dave Chappelle at three, another Nate Bargansi at four, and George Carlin at five. Never heard of Nate Bargansi. I gotta check him out then. I guess that's two twice I've heard I've said, seen his name on on the list here. So good job, uh, Alex, for that, that list of course. Daniel Trawick has Robin Williams at one. Ronnie Dangerfield at two, Martin Lawrence at three, Eddie Murphy at four, and Cat Williams at five. I had Cat Williams also on my list on my top five as well. Cat Williams' his heyday was pretty sick, dude. I love Cat Williams. So good job, Daniel, there. Andrew Miller has George Carlin at one, Robin Williams at two, Louis Black at three, 
Dave Chappelle at four, and Alonzo Bowden at five. He also notes that Bowden was a random find on Satellite Radio one day. Thanks for sharing that, Andrew. Thank you very much. A couple more here. A couple more uh, responses here. Brian Snow. He has George Carlin one. Richard Pryor two. Bill Cosby at three. Uh, Louis Black at four. Eddie Murphy at five. Good one there. Brian Snow. Like your list there as well. Um, Jay Snyder has George Carlin at one. He says, wait for his time. I agree with that 100%. Bill Burr at two. I love that one. In fact, Bill Burr would be my list if I had to do it over again. Dave Chappelle at three. Jim Jeffries at four. Joe Rogan at five. He also has honor mentions for Burt Kreischer, Tom Segura, and Joey Diaz. First off, uh, Bill Burr, if I did it all over again, he might he may crack my top ten. Bill Burr's podcast is fantastic. Um, his stand-up team is, is, is even better. Um, let me see here. He has Rogan in the top five. Rogan's funny, but I never consider him a top tier comedian, in my, in my opinion, anyway. Um, Kreischer's pretty decent. Uh, Joey Diaz is funny as hell. He tells some great stories too, especially in this podcast. So thank you, JD, for that one. Uh, Roger the guy so has uh, he only put three here. He put George Carlin at one, Ronnie Dangerfield at two, and Steve Wright at three. That's all he had there. Um, there was a trend here. George Carlin's been top five for pretty much everybody here. George Carlin was way ahead of his time. He really was. And finally, Megan Hume. Um, she did not rank hers though. She says uh, she has Eddie Murphy at one, Ron Williams at two, Tiffany Haddish at three, Melissa McCarthy at four. And Mike Myers at five. Um, love seeing some female female uh, names here on this list. I mentioned also on that episode too that uh, I had Lisa Lavinelli. If I do it over again, also Lisa, Lisa Lavinelli might, might crap my top ten as well too. Um, so thanks, Megan. Thank everybody also for responding on this list of comedians, top five comedians of all time. And uh, yeah, that's fun. We'll keep doing these uh, these um, these QOTWs. Maybe maybe this week again. We'll see what happens. Um, but. That's it for this podcast today. Again, once again, dated July 16th, 2023. Again, I'm on Twitter at EJChristian7. Again, earnestly podcast across all podcast catchers. Um, until, I guess, the next one was probably Tuesday, I'm assuming, right? I, I'm assuming. Um, when are summer months, man? There's not really, really no sports going on in baseball. My team sucks, right? So football is turning the corner. Turning the corner to football. We're getting there. So talk to you guys later. God bless you all. And see ya. <laughs> Thank you.